1998, University of California professor Tyrone Hayes was invited to join a panel of scientists to study the effects of the herbicide atrazine on frogs, fish, and other animals. Atrazine is an herbicide, and, and it is, you know, in a nutshell, it is the largest selling uh, agrochemical in the world. It is the top selling product for the largest agrochemical company in the world. It is used on the top crop for the largest economy in the world, the U.S. And one of the things that's used to fight is the most common weed in the world. So it's a, you know, it's a big deal. And one of the things that we know now, and, and this is being shown all over the world, is that atrazine's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. I just came back from a, a meeting of chemists talking about atrazine and how it sticks around for 10, 15 years. I mean, my biggest concern would be the water. If you live in the Midwest and every bit of water that you drink is contaminated with atrazine, your rainwater, I mean, imagine. Rainwater has enough atrazine in it to make hermaphroditic frogs. Atrazine caused males to lose their androgen, their testosterone. The result is these males become chemically castrated. In some cases, they'll completely grow ovaries mixed in with their testes. In other cases, they'll grow eggs and, and actually yolk eggs inside their testes instead of making sperm. What does it have to do with humans? Humans don't grow eggs in their testes. Well, but humans get breast cancer. And the same gene, it's involved in breast cancer. The hormone that's involved is exactly the same in frogs as it is in humans. A million people a day are exposed to atrazine. You know, I think it's not just frogs, it's fish we have to be concerned about. And it's not just fish and frogs, it's how they fit into ecosystems. A little frog in a fish bowl is not all that different from a little fetus in, a, in the womb. I mean, our fetuses, humans, live in an aquatic environment just like amphibians, where they're breathing in and sucking up and soaking themselves in the water for nine months, just like our tadpoles in those little buckets. And many of those chemicals our placenta aren't designed to filter out these synthetic chemicals. Many of these chemicals are in that amniotic fluid. We know that now. And then you also have to be concerned about not just you and I, but the farm workers that are exposed to huge levels, that are applying this stuff. Atrazine is used to control weeds in cornfields, sugarcane fields, residential lawns, Christmas tree farms, and golf courses. In 2003, after 10 years of contentious scientific debate, the Environmental Protection Agency reapproved the use of atrazine in the United States. Syngenta itself, which used to be Novartis, used to be Ciba, of Ciba Geige. It's a Swiss-based company. The reason I laugh is atrazine's never been legal in Switzerland, ever. So here we have a company in a country that makes a compound that has never been legal in their country. They sell it to us and we expose a million people. We use 60, 80 million pounds of it a year. You know, it's banned all over Europe now. But they'll sell it 80 million pounds of it a year, $500 million a year of it to the US. And we'll spread it all over the place. <laughs> 